guys, this morning I'm gonna season up a whole chicken, but and roast it. So I'm gonna season up a whole chicken and roast it. This is gonna be marinating for about four hours. Um, I'm doing sort of a meal prep kind of vibe today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is weigh out my butter. Not really weigh out, but you know, I'm gonna do like a tablespoon of caramel butter. Or one and a half teaspoon. Guys, you know how I season in the kitchen. I go with my vibe. I'm just making a rub with lots of herbs. And I'm using a three pound chicken. So that's the amount of butter that I'm going to use. And I'm using the Kerrygold butter. I had it at room temperature. So you need to put your butter at room temperature. I'm going to add a scallion some people call it spring onion but in jamaica we call it um scallion i'm gonna use two small scotch bonnet pepper four cloves of garlic a piece of ginger and some pimento seed or pimento pimento seed so some pimento seeds so everything is washed and ready right so that's the seasoning i'm gonna use as in like the um natural seasoning so i'm gonna go in with my spices guys i'm gonna wing it these are all no carb right so i'm just gonna wing it and um see so i'm gonna go in with some badia cumin I always emphasize cumin is very strong so you want to be careful how much of it you eat with depending on your taste some onion powder now guys I already washed my chicken and clean it I cleaned it and washed it in vinegar I'm gonna go in with some cayenne pepper just for a little spice um, along with the scotch bonnet pepper so you know I have to go in with our gloves this morning right so some cayenne pepper I'm here to open this bottle and pierce the holes properly some paprika I didn't have a bottle so I use a, a bottle that I already had so this is paprika not smoked just regular I'm going with a little dash now I love garlic so we're gonna go in with all, all of this no I'm gonna leave some because I'm also doing some stuffed chicken breast today and two pieces of spare ribs I'm gonna go in with a little salt and I have some vineyard spice jerk all purpose and chicken season in this Mrs. Dash bottle, but that's what I'm, I'm, I'm pouring in now. And I mix all three seasonings together, so I'm just going in with about a tablespoon of it. This is gonna be a very flavorful chicken. I'm gonna go in with, with some Mrs. Dash original blend. Guys, you know I always talk about the herb that I get from Coronation Market that has in everything, right? So, I was watching a couple of videos this week and I realized that this might very well be a herb de Provence spice uh, herb blend because it has everything that that herb de Provence would normally have except probably the lavender um, florets so I'm gonna go in with about three two to three tablespoons of this so it's time to go shopping guys so I need to do that and record it so you guys can see so 
I'm going in with that amount of the herbs. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Two tablespoons is 30 milliliters. So that's what I'm going to pour in. Right guys, so this is all that I'm using. I'm gonna blend this up and come right back and get out the chicken so we can, you know, have that all rubbed in and ready to marinate for about four hours. Hold on. Guys, this is how the seasoning look right about now. I'm gonna add in just a a teaspoon or tablespoon of this soy sauce let me see one carb I can't manage this you know mm. just a a teaspoon instead And I'm gonna add in the same of liquid smoke. And I'm using the right liquid smoke. Ooh. So that was over a little teaspoon. So I'm gonna blend this up and come back. So guys, this is the seasoning. I did add a little bit more um, olive oil because it was too thick. So I'm going to just go ahead and massage this chicken. Now, this chicken might not be the sexiest chicken. I cut open the back to clean it out. And then now I'm going to just season the chicken rubbing in the mixture all over and under the chicken skin. Now I've done this recipe before and I can tell you guys just the aroma from the, the mixed seasoning tells you guys that you know this chicken is gonna be everything there's heat coming from the seasoning heat Now I'm going to cook this guys in the electric pressure cooker. We, we, some people have Instapot. It's the same thing. It's just different brands. So that's what I'm going to use to cook this chicken. I'm going to do it saute on each side until it's brown. And then I'm going to add just a little water to it and um add just a little water to it and then add a little water to it and then pressurize it so the insides can be cooked and then depending on how it comes out and me or me not add it to the broiler for a couple minutes to get a nice color on it now guys this is a great meal prep meal prep um, a great meal prep kind of chicken so you can 
do it in quarters and store it in the fridge for the week to come today is sunday so i'll have a quarter of chicken that i can just you know pull out of the fridge and do a salad or do some cauliflower mash and have that ready to go so i don't have to buy food on the road now guys this is it for this chicken i'm gonna run on the road for a little bit and then when i come back i will season the other the chicken breast to that I'm gonna do stuffed and wrapped in bacon. So I'm gonna do one piece of it stuffed with cream cheese and then I'm gonna do the other two pieces wrapped in bacon. So guys, this is it. Chicken all seasoned and will be in the fridge marinating for a few hours until I get back. Guys, I'm gonna make a rub for a some chicken breast that I will be preparing and this rub is gonna be like a blackened seasoning for some chicken strips that I'll be making out of one chicken breast boneless and um, four pieces of chicken breast that I'll be doing with some cream cheese and bacon so I'm gonna add so let me see right so i'm gonna add some garlic powder i just had to buy garlic powder not not too long ago so so some garlic powder and this is a dry rub some salt Paprika, gonna add some cumin, some cayenne. to add in black pepper and I have the last of my 12 spice my Burberry 12 spice and I'm gonna add that to it I'm just gonna add a little bit of this all purpose seasoning to it as well. So I'm gonna mix this all over to make the rubber. Oh, some onion powder. I need to add that. So, I'm gonna add some onion powder. I have the worst onion powder, guys. It tends to stick a lot. So, that's the onion powder. So I'm gonna get out my first piece of chicken breast and I'm gonna create some just turn it into strips. So just some nice slices into strips so I can do that real quick like in the daytime if I'm hungry and I need something quick. I can just throw this in the air fryer. So 
four pieces. They're not even, but we're good. And then I have four pieces of chicken breast this size. So I'm gonna stuff inside of it and then wrap it with bacon. All boneless I just debone it so you know I'm gonna make a chicken broth to go in my roast chicken it's a bit fun now. I'm just gonna season everything even though I'm not gonna cook the chicken strips now but you know it's gonna be the same rub and I can store it in the freezer We're gonna do some mushroom today and what else are we gonna do? Probably some pak choy, maybe, cause guess what guys, I'm just gonna cook the meats and cause this week I know my schedule is gonna be a little tight. So I'm just doing the roast chicken and these chicken breasts so I can have them to take to work. No stress, all I have to do in the mornings is get up and you know prepare some breakfast to take with me if i'm gonna have breakfast you know make my coffee and stuff like that speaking about coffee as soon as i'm finished i'm gonna make my coffee i still can't find lettuce i still can't find cabbage everything is on scarce so guys this is my chicken breast all seasoned um i'm gonna put it in the fridge to marinate for a little bit and go ahead and make my chicken stock at least yeah so i can get like a cup or so to add to the pressure cooker when i'm doing my roast chicken so i'm gonna get this in the fridge and make my coffee and probably uh break a breakfast meal like with some eggs and arm slices and stuff like that as I have in my cup about 30 milliliters of heavy cream, I'm gonna add 12 ounces or uh, thereabout of coffee. If 12 ounces can hold. I'm going to add 15 milliliters of coconut oil. So I'm gonna let that melt a little and then maybe I need to blend this up, get it nice and frothy and come back. 
so this is how it looks after I have it blended up nice and foamy um, guys you might have seen the oil on the top of it and saying oh my god that coffee looks so disgusting but I guarantee you it doesn't taste as bad as it looks I promise you that um, this coffee is actually called a bulletproof coffee you add fat to your regular cup of coffee that would be my coconut oil and my butter and what that does you have that in the morning and what that does to your body is keep your stomach full so you have a wider gap of fasting if you understand what I'm saying so remember that fats keep you full for longer so when you add the you know you're drinking your tea and so you, you make your bulletproof coffee so coffee suppresses appetite and then you're adding fats to it that keeps you fuller for longer and then no it is called bulletproof because guess what it is the real deal so don't watch the oils and see how it look and it don't look pretty or whatever just think about the end result and the benefits all right guys so i'm gonna have my cup of coffee and check back with you guys when I'm in the kitchen okay guys so I'm gonna prepare breakfast I started to prepare the, the meal without even thinking to record I'm so used to just living my best life without recording okay so I melted some butter I'm gonna make a 90 second bread so I have the almond flour and I'm going to use three tablespoons of that. By the way, it's minutes after three and I'm just eating my first meal from morning. I had coffee earlier. So I'm using three tablespoons of almond flour. It's a Kirkland Blanched Almond Flour. I got this from Amazon. I'm going to go in with half tablespoon of baking powder. One pack of stevia. Today is a drop sugar packets in the meal day. So I'm going to add one egg. So I took out one egg to fry and some ham slices. I'm going to take out the cheese out of the freezer shortly. So one egg. And a little salt. Mix that all up. And then I'm going to do it in the microwave for 90 seconds. I'm going to do... Let me see... So I'm going to do this for 90 seconds. Add one tablespoon of curry rose butter.
So I'm going to season up this egg now with some garlic powder and some garlic powder, some Himalayan sea salt and some cayenne pepper. I'm going to put a little parsley on it as well. So now I'm going to add the cheese. Ooh. And the two slices of Try get this folded. Okay, get that, that ham warmed up and that cheese because it's coming from the freezer. And then let me take out my bread from the microwave. And I have my paper towel ready to get rid of that oil from the egg. So, right, so get that oil out. I'm wondering if I should toast up the inside of this bread. So I'm gonna have this sandwich for breakfast and take the chicken out from the fridge to get to room temperature and then I'll be back in the kitchen to show you guys how I do my roast chicken in the pressure cooker right guys so this is breakfast I'm gonna have with this some water nothing fancy right so this is what I'll be having for breakfast. Because this is what we're gonna cook our chicken in. So unfortunately, I have to go on the road. And so, um, I won't be cooking the chicken first. Or let me not say I won't be cooking, depending on what time I'm back. Guys, this is the chicken that I seasoned up from this morning, remember? So I'm gonna add all chicken to the pot when the oil is heated. And we're gonna brown it on each side. Thumb or tongue? Should I have um, the cord to like tie the chicken legs together and the, the wings? But I do have it, so I have to just do what I have to do. So I'm gonna add it to the pot. This way. And start the browning process. 
So guys, that's just gonna warm up and we're gonna do it on each side and I'll show you guys how to do it uh, after each side is done. Because we're gonna get the little preparing the little preparing the um the cauliflower the cauliflower salad so we can go into the food and cook. This side, I'm going to just use this small cauliflower, cut it up, rinse it in some water and vinegar. And I'm going to boil one egg in the meantime, hard boil one egg. The lighting is kind of poor, guys. I My socket on this side is not working, so I have to just make do with what I have. for how much $277 guys vegetable is so expensive in Jamaica rough <laughs> I have my cauliflower wash and ready and right now I'm gonna just so I'm gonna add this to this tray and I'm gonna add one tablespoon of olive oil to it because I don't think that I need more than one we're gonna add this to the oven yeah two tablespoons we're gonna add it to the we're gonna add it to the oven to roast up I do not recommend boiling the cauliflower because you don't want it to be soft i'm gonna sprinkle a little salt on it and toss it up you just want it to get tender so i'm just putting it in the oven for about 15 to 18 minutes if so much until it gets tender the leg side but in the meantime I'm gonna wash my seasoning and get it ready to be sliced up so that's my onion my sweet pepper my dill pickle and the half cup of baby corn I'm gonna add baby corn to it I it's the first that I'm gonna add the baby corn but I got a bright idea so I'm gonna add the baby corn to it. So I'm just gonna use two slices of this red onion. This onion is not behaving itself. So it's not making my be great. So I'm just gonna use that amount and I'm gonna chop it up. Mince it, right? That's the correct term. I'm gonna mince the onion. So 
So here I go mincing the onion. Today is so hot, so hot. So I'm gonna take out one slice of the dill pickle. Leave these two for burger during the week. <laughs> this should be it. I added some jalapeno to it so I can't touch it because it's hot. This one side to weigh all the baby corn. And this is the bun that I'm using. It's baby corn soaked in water and salt. So I rinsed off the corn. I'm gonna just ensure I have the right measurement. So that's 125 grams for. One hundred and twenty five grams for half cup. All right, this is it. So I'll have a next serving for later on in the week. So I'm gonna cut this up, guys, and have it ready for. Basically, everything is ready now for the cauliflower, and then we're gonna add the add the cauliflower to to this mixture and the egg.
so this is how it looks I'm gonna cover it and pressurize it on for 30 minutes so that's what I'm gonna do and then it will be ready to be eaten, cooked all the way through all the stuff ready for the salad the cauliflower salad i took out the sour cream and i'm using the daisies brand and some mayonnaise hillman's is it hellman's that's the brand i'm using i'm gonna just get my eggs ready i did the corn i realized that i might need an extra egg so i just added it and got two eggs instead of one Alright, so we're gonna cut up the eggs. Oh, nice. And hard boil. We're gonna combine everything now to this bowl. So the eggs, two eggs, half cup of baby corn, onion, sweet pepper, dill pickle. We're gonna take out our kitchen scale because we're gonna weigh Fifteen grams of this heavy cream, this whip, this sour cream. So fifteen grams. Actually, two servings. Actually, the serving size. So thirty grams. Thirty grams. The serving size is actually 30 grams. I wanted to use I wanted to use half of the serving size, but I remember that I added the corn. I remember that I added the corn, so I need to add the actual serving size. And this is the same. One serving is 15 grams and I want two. So just a little tip more. Might have to add a little more. Right. We might have to add a little more of the mayonnaise, but we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna get the cauliflower. to the mixture and I'm gonna toss this up I'm 
gonna add some salt and some black pepper and cayenne pepper and a little tip of garlic. So some salt. Some garlic powder. Some cayenne pepper. And some black pepper. So I decided that I'm gonna add one more tablespoon of mayonnaise. So this is the cauliflower salad. It looks so good. I'm gonna taste it. Ah! Taste it with a corn and a piece of egg. I'm gonna add some more seasoning. It's a little bland. It's a little bland. But differently. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, the sour cream. I want that tart taste from the sour cream. I'm not getting that. So I'm just gonna add a little tip more. So. So I'm just adding a little more sour cream to it to get that tart taste so this will be it a little more salt a little more cayenne pepper and a little more sour cream and then we're good to go so I'm gonna put this in the fridge right now I have two minutes for the chicken to be done and then dinner is ready so road for me right now yeah so this is it guys the cauliflower salad you i promise you won't miss i promise you you won't miss um potato salad with this salad right here i promise you that like cauliflower is the new irish potato so this is bomb i love it and i really hope you try the recipe guys we're gonna open it up now and take a look at this chicken so the chicken is done it's literally falling off the bone and so juicy so juicy i can't wait to have a serving of this there it's literally breaking apart so there you have it good stuff done in the pressure cooker some dessert with red velvet chocolate just some niceness put this over here so no my favorite dessert is red velvet chocolate cheesecake a lot of stuff right so I usually get that at pastry fashion, but now that I'm on keto, I can't really go to pastry fashion, so I have to make my own cake now.
I always make chocolate cake, but I need to change it up a bit to, you know, represent more of what I usually get when I go to pastry fashion for a baking dish. So I'm gonna bake a little base for the cake, which is chocolate, and I'm gonna start by adding first one cup. I'm gonna zero this out and then add 96 grams. It's 49. So that's the almond flour. The next thing I'm gonna add is 43 grams of cocoa powder. Guys, this is the cocoa powder I'm using and I added 43 grams. We're gonna go in with some sweetener and today I'm using pure. We're gonna add 85 grams of the pure sweetener. This is a half a teaspoon, but the recipe calls for one teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of the baking powder. So I'm going to add one teaspoon. As I mentioned before, the recipe called for some coconut oil, two and a half teaspoon. But I don't have that, so I'm gonna add. Um, I don't have the, the amount of coconut oil, so I'm gonna add the equivalent in butter. So when, right now, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna add some spices, some cinnamon and some mixed spices.
I'm gonna add three eggs. Has three eggs, a quarter cup of almond milk. And I'm gonna add the silk almond milk. We're gonna see how many how much teaspoon of the oil we get before we add the water. You know, just to ensure that we don't OD on the butter. So call it that we did one and a half tablespoon of coconut oil. So I'm gonna just heat um soften some butter and add it to the mix. For one tablespoon. And we're gonna use a curry gold butter. Have some cream cheese getting down to room temperature and one egg. And I'm gonna weigh out eight ounces of the cream cheese and I'm gonna mix it with one egg and some of the sweetener and I'm gonna you know do a layered version of this cake so I'm gonna mix half of this cake as let it stay as is in terms of chocolate flavor and then I'm gonna add some vinegar and some red food coloring to turn the other layer into red velvet and we do like a you know layered first layered cake so one layer will be chocolate the other layer will be cheese and then the final layer will be red velvet so i'm melting the bottom so i'm gonna add it just put it on the other side because I don't want it to cook the eggs and I'm gonna add this so everything is now added all the ingredients or oh, just a pinch of salt all the ingredients has been added and I'm gonna just put this on the blender bottom and get it all combined and ready to go into the um, baking pan so this is the mix blend. It's perfect. Philadelphia cream cheese. Um, and one egg, some vanilla, some pure. So I'm gonna weigh out eight ounces of the cream cheese in this container. I have taken out some cream cheese to do a recipe the other day, but I didn't bother to do, do it. So I'm just gonna weigh out the cream cheese from here. It's the same Philadelphia cream cheese. So that's three, seven. Right, 
right so eight ounces usually we use powder twelve but I don't have any so I'm gonna go in with let me see I'm gonna go in with about three ounces not three one ounce of cream cheese one ounce of sweet now one gonna get this all blended I'm now going to add my one egg that's at room temperature. So, one egg, and then I'm going to add some vanilla, a teaspoon, I'm still deciding if I'm gonna do it in a cupcake form or um, cake form. All right, guys. So this is the deal. This is the cream cheese filling, all mixed and ready to go. I think I'm gonna do it in a cake form as opposed to the cupcake. So right here I have the baking dish with some parchment paper. And I'm gonna add half of the cream cheese mixture to it. I'm not gonna take out the mixer because I'm gonna add some vinegar and some um some vinegar and some food coloring to it So the bottom of the cake will be chocolate, the middle will be cheese, so let me set this one side. So I'm going to dump the cream cheese mixture on top of this. Guys, it's the first time making this cake. I'm so nervous. But let's see. That is how the key to life works. You have to spoil some things. I remember the first time I bought coconut flour. Because I was feeling for sawfish fritters <laughs> you know the worst part about it I was dating and my guy friend was over the house and I said I'm gonna make sawfish fritters with coconut flour because I am on the keto diet and I'm really feeling for some sawfish fritters so I said okay Took out the, the, the coconut flour and I'm there and uh, uh, 
say, put this coconut for coming like cornmeal. How the hell it go turn out? You know? I am not really pay no mind, but just season up the, the soft fish and have my thing ready because I go make cook, I go make sawfish fritters. It's that I go make because it's that I want. And I'm using coconut flour to do it. Guys, I should have been warned. Hmm. One disaster. One disaster. Same. <laughs> guys i'm gonna set this one side and um add the other ingredients for the, the rest of it so we'll have the remainder of the butter right and we're gonna just tip a little vinegar in it just a little vinegar probably like half teaspoon So that's one teaspoon of vinegar that I added to the, the remainder of the mix. And I'm gonna now add some food coloring. And this is Benjamin's and it's red. made a mess I'm gonna add one tablespoon one teaspoon I'm gonna mix it up and see how it turns out and get this counter cleaned up and add it to the rest of the mixture this is how it looks the red batter I'm gonna add the remainder of it and the, the rest of the batter now to this chocolate cream cheese so we're starting off with the the i don't know what you call this this we're starting off with this part of it the part that spins in the blender gonna add the rest Guys, it's the first I'm making this cake, so I'm not sure on how long it's going to take to bake. I'm just going to put it in the oven. Normally when I bake a chocolate cake, I put it in the oven for about half an hour. So, I have to just see how it work out, like gauge it and stuff like that before I can tell you guys the time. That's it to be so I'm gonna add it to the the oven and see what happens. Guys, on the top of this cake was a little bit um, overdone, but it was still moist. It was very, very good. It tasted really nice. The consistency was great. So I'd recommend this cake, definitely.